What is this in JavaScript? It's a keyword that references another value, usually an object, that represents the current execution context. Okay, but what the hell does execution context mean? It either refers to your global environment, like the browser or Node.js, or when used inside a function, it references the object calling that function at a given time. Open up the browser and run console log this. You get the window object back because you're in the global execution context. Doing the same thing in Node.js from the command line gives you the global object back. Things get interesting when we talk about function context. Define a function and then console log this inside the function body. Now if we run this function in the browser, we'll still get the window object back. That's because our global context is executing the function. Now, let's take that same function and use it as a property on an object. When we call the function on this object, it references this object. Now, sometimes you might have a function and an object defined separately. You can tell the function to use some other object as it's this value using the function's bind method. The result is a new function where any references to this inside the function will point to the object that you pass as the argument here. But where you'll see this used most often is in constructor functions using the new keyword. The new keyword allows you to call a function that creates an object where this is automatically bound to that newly created object. And that means you can create properties and methods like many other object-oriented programming languages. For example, we can define a property like this name. Then we can define a method like say hello and use this to reference the name property on this object. And that gives us a convenient way to keep the data and functionality of an object tightly coupled together. But there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. So keep watching if you want to go beyond 100 seconds and learn some more advanced and weird aspects of this. But first, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Oh, hey there, thanks for sticking around. This is a special bonus segment where we can slow things down and take a deeper dive into JavaScript this, which gives you plenty of rope to hang yourself with. If you like this extra segment, let me know in the comments because there's always room to go beyond 100 seconds. Over the next few minutes, we'll look at some caveats of this, look at the bind call and apply methods, and look at some more practical examples of object-oriented and functional programming patterns. So when I'm writing JavaScript code and I see this, I always try to ask myself, what is this? But unfortunately, the answer is not very clear because this in JavaScript works differently than a lot of other languages, and it just seems completely weird if you're brand new to programming. Now here's caveat number one, strict mode and non-strict mode. Back in the earlier days of JavaScript, there were certain features of the language that sucked. And so with ES5, they introduced strict mode to turn some of those features off. For this video, I'm going to assume that you're in strict mode. If you're doing front-end development, you're probably in strict mode without even realizing it, but it's important to know that this behaves slightly different if you're not in strict mode. One of the most important differences is that in strict mode, if you call a function in the global context, this will be undefined instead of referring to window or global in node. This usually isn't a big deal because in most code, you'll just reference window or global directly and not use this as a reference to those objects. Now that's one thing to keep in mind, but I think the single most important caveat to understand with this is how it works with arrow functions. As you can see here, we have an object. On the first object property, we have a function defined with the function keyword. It's the same example that I showed you at the beginning of this video. This, when called by the object, references the object that called that function. Now if we write a second property and use an arrow function, you'll notice this is now the global object or undefined in strict mode. In an arrow function, this is based on the enclosing object's execution context, which in this example would be global. In other words, it doesn't have its own binding to this, so it looks up to its parent and closing object and uses that this value. If you've ever used Vue.js, you'll notice in the documentation they tell you to use a regular function keyword as opposed to an arrow function. And that's because they're not really suitable for methods because of the way they interact with this. So now that you know some of the caveats, we're going to look at three prototype methods that live on a function object, bind, call, and apply. Let's start by looking at bind because I think you'll come across this one most often. Let's imagine we have a function and an object, and these things are immutable, meaning we can't change them. The function references this inside the body, which in this case would be the global context, but we want it to use this other object as this. We can create a new function that's bound to this object by calling bind on the original function and passing the object as the argument. When we execute this function, you'll notice that this now refers to the object we passed in. So bind gives you a way to explicitly set this on a function. Now in other cases, you might want to call a function with a different this context, but not create a whole brand new function. And for that, you can use call or apply. In this example, we use the call method on the function, and the first argument to it is it's this context that you want to set. This will call the function immediately, and you can pass additional arguments to it as well for the arguments that go to that function. And lastly, I'll point out that you also have the apply method, which is identical to call. The only difference is that the second argument is an array of arguments. 
A good way to remember the difference is to think A for array or apply, or C for comma or call. Call is more common in modern JavaScript because you can use the spread syntax on the arguments when you're working with an array. But the bottom line is that they both serve the same purpose to call a function with an explicit this context. Now it's worth noting that you tend to encounter this much more often in classical object-oriented programming versus functional programming, both of which are programming paradigms that you can use in JavaScript. For example, one of the big motivations of React to use functional components over class-based components was so that developers wouldn't have to use this in their code, because it gets even more complicated when you have a big framework with a bunch of dependencies and components. Personally though, I find this to be very straightforward when working with JavaScript constructor functions. Let's imagine we wanted to create a horse class. When this function is called with the new keyword, it creates a new object, so we can create methods and properties on those objects by making a reference to this. So this works much more like a class definition in other languages like Java, Ruby, Python, and so on. And JavaScript actually provides syntactic sugar for this whole process using the class keyword. But we'll save that one for a future 100 second video. Because there's one more important thing that you should know about this, and that's a thing called method chaining. You'll see a lot of JavaScript libraries that allow you to chain methods together like this, always keeping a reference to the original object. So how do you chain methods together in JavaScript? Well, you simply return this from your method. And now you can chain together an infinite number of method calls. Thanks for sticking around to go beyond 100 seconds. I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next one.